for Creamer Media's Polity. I'm Lungile Nkonfe. Joining me today is Sung Yun, here to discuss his book, The Samsung Man's Path to Success. Briefly tell us how you began your career at Samsung in 1989. You weren't planning on staying very long as you had aspirations to start your own business. Yeah, actually, my father was running quite big business at that time. So he had an uh, ambition for me to take over his business. So at one time it was uh, growing. Uh, and uh, after later on it struggled a little bit. So I didn't have a plan to spend the whole my life with uh, uh, Samsung. But when I joined to have some experience from big company and uh, understand the global you know, business type of thing, but it ended up uh, over 30 years or so. And uh, my father's business uh, has been taken over by my older brother, which is good. So I spend most of my time uh, with the Samsung. You speak about the role that Samsung's global sales organization plays in its success. Why is that so important for you to highlight in your book? Yeah, that's uh, actually one of the main uh, reasons uh, I wrote a book. Is uh, you know, people think sales is just uh, you know building up relationship and uh, you know, having social type of thing, but it's not. Like the 1990s, when Samsung had a good product, right? They invested a lot of uh, things uh, in the new technology, future technology. So technology and the product itself became very strong. But in the market, market uh, consumers didn't understand the Samsung such a global level uh, quality and, and product. So why is that? So uh, top management to, uh, were thinking about what's the main reason. It's continuously developed a better uh, technology and product quality. Still, we couldn't reach the global tier, uh, top tier level at all. So I decided, wow, well, do we have a pr good product? If it's not on the retail sales shelf, customer will not buy. So that's why first time I was assigned to support uh, retail partners' uh, business directly. So I was being expected to a uh, retailer's uh, head office and meet them uh, three, four times a day to develop uh, how we can set up a common goal and uh, promotion strategy together. So what happened is uh, previously we had, uh, let's say, only two or four TVs on the uh, TV uh, retail stores. And by working closer with them, I can tell which product is good in the mid-tier, uh, the flagship, you know, premium tier. So we had a more balance. Uh, so the, the year when I joined uh, the retail team, like uh, called Best Buy in America, uh, previous year we had uh, only two to three SKUs selling uh, keep stock unique type of thing, uh, improved to 20 TVs out of 100. Immediately our uh, market share jumped up from, you know, low five, seven, one digit uh, market share, jumped up to 20 market share. So Samsung realized, yes, sales is uh, the key. One of the key elements to, to be a global number uh, one or leading brand. So I wanted to share that type of uh, uh, strategy and approach and the partnership, uh, how sales can contribute uh, to both, you know, for Samsung and uh, for the retail. In your book, you talk about the values that drive a so-called Samsung man. What are some of these values? Well, it uh, started from Korea. So we can say Samsung was a Korean brand, but now it's a global brand. But in Korea, Samsung man is uh, a noun, right? It's not Samsung man, Samsung man. So the image uh, uh, is come together, Samsung man is uh, 
first the color is wearing blue because the Samsung color is blue. And the uh, Samsung man's uh, uh, kind of uh, image is uh, always trying to be a uh, number one, which is good. Target number one and consistently trying uh, to achieve the goal and uh, by uh, making all the policies and uh, you know, uh, employee relationship and uh, you know, payment, everything should be top number one combined. So that's a kind of a spirit from the beginning when we were mediocre brand. And by having that type of uh, policy, strategy and uh, uh, treatment for the employee, put the people first. That type of thing is just Samsung man. So the way we set up the goal and the way we work with uh, our partners always respect their strategy and uh, trying to help their pain points and always trying to be reasonable and uh, fair and uh, uh, open transparent uh, communication so if we fail fine yes we review why we failed but we don't punish uh, the employee because of failed so our founders and uh, his uh, successor the uh, chairman always said try to something, right? New challenges and new technologies and new customers. If you fail, it's fine. Don't worry about that. So that made a Samsung man collectively. He writes about partnering with IBM in the US. Tell us what it taught you about sales culture. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good question. I uh, was uh, being expected to America first time was uh, IBM account. So, IBM was well known as a global standard for the international business. So, Samsung was providing uh, our product under their name, called OEM. Since Samsung brand was a mediocre and the people, consumers didn't know much about that. So, we worked with IBM and put their brand and logo, but all the technology they uh, collaborate with uh, Samsung. So my role was uh, quite uh, eye-opening for my entire life. Why? IBM was the icon of uh, innovation at that time. Right? They developed the uh, PCs and uh, you know, all the new technologies and, and uh, over 30, 40 years. And well uh, structures, systemized and the process of uh, everything very transparent uh, communication and uh, process. So every day I had a meeting with them, with each division. So I realized, wow, those people have over 20 or 30 years experience and the nice to a new beginner type of person. So you know, that's why I learned you know, from the, the beginning and how to set up the relationship and build the trust and the process of uh, request for a quotation or a proposal and how we can manage quality control and approve the product and the pricing and the collaborate the sales strategy together. Most interesting was Samsung taking on Apple in the smartphone market. How did Samsung manage to close the gap? Well, that's uh, really tough, right? So television, uh, was a slightly different story. Sony television was uh, very strong when it was uh, analog uh, period, but they slipped a little bit uh, on the transition to the digital technology. So flat, you know, all LCD, uh, plasma TV, they were developing that product, but not such a passionate uh, and, and urgent manner, right? So Samsung uh, was more enthusiastic in digital uh, migration. That's why we beat uh, Sony first time uh, in 2006. But Apple was iconic of uh, innovation with the new iPhone, a smartphone. So they were far advanced. And uh, as a later learner, Samsung was very difficult uh, to catch up. 
So we checked and analyzed how uh, they are strong in the market. First, their sales marketing strategy we learned. Uh, they have uh, focused with uh, one telco uh, company in America and gave uh, almost over four years exclusivity. So they grew together and the top leading mobile players in America as well as global. So they had almost uh, over 80-90% of their customers are Apple, iPhone, because they had uh, over four years exclusivity versus all other telco players. So without uh, winning at AT&T over iPhone, there's no way we Samsung can reduce the gap and uh, uh, overcome iPhone's uh, market share. So, again, our top management decided sending me uh, to AT&T account. So the way we catch up the gap and uh, beat uh, iPhone is uh, develop really unique and uh, advanced technology for AT&T and gave them a certain amount of uh, time period uh, exclusivity. It's not like uh, four years, it's, uh, it's uh, like uh, three months or six months, but it worked. So understood what our business partners are like. They really like uh, something new and uh, a unique technology and the product. So something had it and gave it to AT&T with a certain time period of uh, exclusivity. We helped each other to grow in the market. So AT&T won in the market and uh, at the same time Samsung won in the market. That's uh, the way we beat uh, and be become number one in smartphone area. You write about your role as Samsung Africa's regional CEO and reveal how surprised employees were when you held a meeting with them on your arrival. Why was it important for you to start off your role in that way? The reason why I was uh, assigned in Africa from my time management is one of the answers to your question. So they said, hey Sung, you spend a lot of time in America, 16 years for three times assignment. That's uh, uh, record breaking in, in, even in Samsung. So you learned a lot of uh, uh, good you know, partnership, how to build a, a strategic partnership and the process from U.S. Why don't you apply that in Africa for the future of the African market and for juniors for their in 10 years and 20 years growth opportunities. So what I tried is uh, try to understand what I was doing in America. Want to understand what, what they want. First of all, my employee. So I asked, hey, uh, I want to meet my employee. Uh, can we put them in the auditorium together? And they all leaders looked around, local leaders looked around. We have never done uh, that before. So I asked, can I meet my, my team? And they said, yes, you can, but we have never done before. What does that mean? Well, the time management never talked to the you know, working level people. Is that anything uh, prohibited? They said no, but we didn't try. But again, I didn't uh, have exactly the same thing from America uh, uh, process here, but that's a communication. I need to communicate with uh, uh, my staff. And uh, the reason why I, I did that is uh, I cannot manage every single you know, thousand different things, right, control. So what I learned uh, from my entire life from other countries, if our staff knows the goal, target of a company, and the strategy, how to pursue and approach, and they do perform well, right? So that's why I said, no, no, communication. You cannot, I, I have a couple of good leaders, but you cannot manage those things properly. This is what I learned, can I do that? So when I met them,
first time. They were embarrassed more than I did because first time see their CEO in person. So I asked, hey, let's do this type of uh, uh, meeting. I can call town or meeting, whichever, but bottom line is uh, communication with you. And I'm going to tell you what uh, our uh, business performance last month, last quarter, and what's our goal going forward. They were all shocked. And they didn't believe probably what I'm saying, right? So the following month, when I presented, hey, here is our performance last year, and, and here is our profit. I trust you, right? And, and keep all these, some of them are uh, com company confidential. They did. So that's why normally that type of uh, uh, town hall meeting is a quarterly basis, but they said, hey, uh, CEO, can we do that every month? I really like it. So they didn't ask a question at the beginning, but gradually they asked uh, many interesting questions as my book episode covers. So one thing I uh, did a little different from you know, normal understanding is uh, any question is fine. There is no acceptable question. question is every question is acceptable. By doing that, I, I realized they are gradually uh, build up, you know, relationship trust between them and me, and I try to remember their name. So sometimes it's not easy to pronounce uh, uh, African name, uh, but I tried. I tried uh, all 450 of our employee name, and, and that that those thing help, helped. I think to build first the trust uh, with my team. Without building one team kind of a spirit, it's difficult to win with uh, our competitors or get trust from our business partners. I think. You also write about the Mandela spirit and you believe that it is important for society. Tell us why you think so. Yeah, actually, uh, I uh, knew about uh, Mandela when I was uh, at college. Uh, He's one of uh, you know, global you know, leader type of thing, but not details, right? I knew him, he's a great uh, person, got Nobel Prize, how many years, like uh, 27 years in prison, but forgiveness type of thing, but very you know, conceptual thing. But what, when I came over here, um, one of my staff organized the uh, uh, Robben Island uh, trip when I visit uh, Cape Town. So I, I, I'm personally thanks to Tokyo Squale, who guided me to Robben Island, where he stayed there over you know, uh, uh, 15, 17 years uh, in prison with uh, Mandela. And at the end, he introduced uh, uh, one person, he's a white, uh, prison officer and said uh, he was very kind to us and I have never met him uh, for the last uh, over 20 years so he's and, and they hugged each other so I saw wow that's a Mandela spirit type of thing true forgiveness and uh, apologize and, and the crying and hugging. That's a very moving uh, moment to me. So since then I was thinking about Mandela uh, again and again. So honestly, uh, in Korea, as well as global, need that type of Mandela spirit. We need to follow his uh, true forgiveness and the embracing and the make of one country and think about the people not not you know personal thing type of thing but truly i thought wow this is something i have to deliver back to korea and uh, that's that's why i'm i'm actually doing uh, some help and contribution in south korea for the mandela day uh, events and uh, some other opportunity I, work with the South African ambassador, Janani Tlamini is an ambassador in Korea. 
So she's another great uh, person uh, as a daughter of Mandela. So sometimes, you know, the, I'm trying to help from my side. You compare your climb up Kilimanjaro to your 32 years at Samsa. Why that comparison? When I was writing my book, I was uh, thinking about the structure, right? So in the middle of the process, I thought started, yes, uh, from America 16 years, back and forth uh, three times, and uh, uh, over here in Africa four years out of 20 years. So Kilimanjaro is the uh, highlight of my life. Not because that's, a, you know, Uru Peak is almost 6,000 meter, but the way to climb up to uh, the Uru Peak, the ice peak, takes uh, at least four days, right? And uh, lots of preparation for climbing. So four days climbing and uh, sometimes uh, take a risk uh, uh, for our life. So I, I was told that less than 40% can make uh, uh, the, the peak, which is true. And by the way, the, the way down is, is no pain. It, I ran down to the, <laughs> to the bottom in, in one day, four days climbing up by adjusting and learning and make a team. So I realized that if I climb by myself, I cannot make it. It should be good company. Right, takes time and the preparation and the revision. If someone is uh, behind, it, then how we can uh, uh, work together, type of thing. On the top, we have to come down. We cannot stay there. That's life. I mean, people always uh, compare, uh, comparing climbing mountain and, and the life. It's a simple common, but that's quite true. And uh, retirement is it's, it's a one day. Right? If you are uh, retired from a company, it will not take another, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, six month, uh, uh, one year type of thing. Retire, you retired. So I, I thought if we come down, how we come down with a lot of pride of accomplishment and expecting another mountain, we are completely disappointed. For me, I was uh, very proud of myself together with our team. So that helped me for me to prepare the next chapter now. So that's why climbing mountain Kilimanjaro is a highlight of my life and uh, uh, very comparable to my uh, career with the Samsung. Climb to the highest level as a CEO and, and president and uh, coming down. Lastly, you didn't write your book as a sales how-to you aren't offering sales advice to people. Tell us what you hope your book accomplishes. Uh, I published a Korean version a year ago in Korea. And uh, in Korea these days, I believe it's the same in, in uh, South Africa and, and global market. So people are uh, looking at the stock market or financial investment only, right? So financial market up and down, up and down type of thing, it's uh, sometimes out of our control. And we are just uh, kind of uh, put ourselves uh, on, on fortune. But my story, as you said, had, uh, is not stock market or financial uh, investment type of thing. It's how we can sell our product to our consumers. So think about no matter what industry or a product, platform, you know, hardware, software, energy, uh, game industry, whatever uh, platform or business you are in, we need to sell something to our uh, consumer. So sales is uh, always there. That's what I want. I wanted to highlight compared to those uh, financial books. So financial book important, but. There are some other words, right? We, and especially young generations, can uh, establish their future. That was Sung Yung discussing his book, The Samsung Man's Part to Success.